All right, welcome back everybody to building Thompson Island. Now, Thompson Island is this very old and historic Cedar Fair park that we started building in Planet Coaster last episode. And, you know, we made some good progress last time remodeling some pretty mediocre buildings that I started off camera. And, you know, I, I overall think that it looks a little bit better. We've started our little bit, our, our you know, a little bit of an international street, I guess, type setup um, from uh, Kings Dominion and Kings Island. So we've got that going for us. And uh, today we're going to be finishing that international street. Uh, you know, putting on the finishing touches and, you know, just making it look nicer. And we might also get started with the plaza right after the street that is going to be home to our first roller coaster. And I'm not sure if we're going to get to building that roller coaster today. Um, there might not be enough time, but we're definitely going to get set up so that we can pretty much begin right away in the episodes to come. Honestly, I'm not going to lie. I just got a COVID booster and it's kind of hitting me hard. But God knows that's not going to stop me from building a kick-ass theme park, and that is exactly what we are going to do today. So let's just get right into it. This is episode 2 of Building Thompson Island. Right, so second episode. It actually kind of feels good to start developing a series more. And, you know, I hope you can join me as I, you know, bring this park to life and kind of expand on it and, you know, make it a real, a real project. Um... But that all starts with this right now. One thing I noticed that I didn't do last time is I didn't finish an interior ceiling for this gift shop building that I made. Um, so yeah, I just did that right there to just top it off. Um, next, I deleted this haphazard, uh, haphazardly made kind of like entrance to that uh, back lot area where employees would go to rest and get, you know, hypothetical materials for like, you know, events, festivals and stuff like that. Just a backstage area. Um, but employees would phase through the fence there, so, you know, that was kind of a temporary fix. I knew that wouldn't be permanent. So right now we're just kind of working on something a little bit more, you know, permanent, I guess. Now, I end up, uh, you know, not settling on this fence. I think I did a decent job here, but it, it, it wasn't great. So I ended up getting, um, you know, just, just a major don't die fence in the Steam Workshop, you know, creator's tool toolkit which I started getting stuff for in this video because as, as cool as the scenery, the in-game scenery is, the vanilla game scenery, it uh, kind of limits like what, what you can do in the game and it doesn't really allow for that realistic parks. So those realistic parks that, you know, I'm kind of aiming for here. I'm not aiming for 100% realism, but I'm aiming for more, more or less realistic experience. And these gates that you would find in Cedar, uh, in a Cedar Fair Park, you know, that's more accurate. It's it's a little bit, you know, less less extravagant, which I guess is what you kind of want. Um, but yeah, now that those gates are in, that's a, little, uh, that's a little bit of a more official way for people to get in. So, after downloading all of those Steam Workshop items, I had these no-entry signs, these staff-only signs, so civilians wouldn't go in there. The civilians, park guests, won't go in there. And, you know, making sure that's just staff only. Um, I did download these trash cans here, these trash can covers that are pretty realistic. And I like them a lot. So, you know, I, I just decided to use them here. They say recycle, which doesn't really make sense for what we're using them for. These are just trash bins after all. But I think they get the job done. And they look pretty, they, they look pretty nice in my opinion. Um, these covers, and it's just a little bit more of a realistic aesthetic. And, you know, I'll go for re realism whenever I can. Um, anyways, so I decided to put up this ticket, um, this ticket sign right here, because, you know, this is hypothetically, like, people aren't going here to get tickets, they're going to be going here to get, you know, your fast passes, your fast tracks, but, you know, in this case, we're just gonna pretend like this is where you would get your tickets. So, um, I accidentally messed up there turning it around. Because signs, the issue with them is they need to be on straight axes, um, axes, I guess, um, so that they, they look perfectly level because then they'll start to phase through the wall and nobody wants that. And these two little stalls right here, that this is where you're going to get your fast, uh, fast lane, uh, you know, your fast track, your fast lane, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but Cedar, Cedar Fair, it's called Fast Lane for them. So Fast Lane Plus and Fast Lane. You know, the, the main issue is, like, the main issue I run into is all of these amusement brands calling their, you know, Express Pass or their Fast Lane, you know, different things. And it gets just so confusing. 
That's like the one thing I just cannot manage. I cannot keep track of that. Um, but yeah, anyways, I made those custom signs for Thompson Island. And, you know, that's just hypothetically where you would get your fast lane. Now, my only gripe with the fast lane system in this game is that um, the maximum you can charge for your fast lane is 30 bucks. Now, you know, we all know capitalism is kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of cool. So, you know, overcharging customers is really cool. So that kind of sucks that I'm not able to charge like $110 for that. But, you know, I guess I kind of have to cope with that. It, it just kind of sucks that I'm not able to be a completely greedy and, you know, completely incompetent park owner, you know. But, but anyways, um, right now we are going to start working on the entrance to this backstage area right here again. And it's already looking a nice, uh, a lot nicer as I'm adding all of these bushes and stuff. It, it definitely gives me a lot of practice with uh, gardening. And I think I get a lot better throughout the series. Um, because keep in mind, I'm doing this commentary after I recorded a few episodes. Um, so yeah, there is in the next episode, episode three, there is, you know, the whole entire episode is basically focused on, you know, expanding this plaza we're going to do. Um, and, you know, part of that includes a very uh, heavily, you know, landscaped area. So I think I definitely got better than this. And, you know, in the future, just looking back at this, like I can tell you, I did not, I did not, you know, change this for the first few episodes that I recorded. But, you know, as of this time, yes, I will go back eventually and fix this. Don't worry. I know it looks pretty ugly. But as for the next few episodes, we're not going to be focusing as much on this backstage area. We're going to be leaving that uh, to one we do when we work on Planet Snoopy or Camp Snoopy, um, which is going to be behind that area. Um, but this is kind of like my favorite building actually so far because it's it was very well decorated. In fact, I spent a large portion of this video just decorating this place, um, you know, just insane decoration insane level of detail here and i mean i'm not i'm, I'm kind of conflicted whether i should spoil what the building is or not but i'm just going to tell you right now because i might as well this is going to be a security building because this is going to be where guests get their first aid if they need first aid and it, this is where the security offices are going to be for all of the security you know workers in the park and um I think this building turned out pretty well, but it took a long time. This was really the first building where I actually paid heavy attention to what's actually inside of it, the interior. And, um, you know, hypothetically, these are just some meeting rooms right here, but they'll serve as break rooms. Um, and we just have a little first aid area there, you know, just a small one um, in essence. So yeah, we, we got that going. I decided that the second level of this building would be a slightly different shade of blue because it just looks a little less boring and it adds a new a new um kind of color palette to this to this area and i think we needed that because we have a lot of cool colors in my opinion but we don't really have anything blue so you know this kind of fills in that gap in my opinion so yeah i just decided to do this little outside balcony here like logistically what does it have a purpose in a security building no like nobody's gonna come up here there's no reason for anybody to come up here, but, you know, we just did it because it honestly just looks cute, in my opinion. It just looks really adorable, that small little balcony overlooking the, you know, the midway. The midway. So, um, this is going to be a thing where we add custom pathing, and here you can already see the paths are just not liking this. Um, that's always why in the future I try to lay down the actual facilities before I lay down the walls and the building around it because the paths like like to connect a little bit more when that happens. Oh, sorry, my, my throat's just a little bit dry right now. Um, anyways, uh, I find it a little bit finicky and I just had to move the medical bay over a little bit and the game seemed to like that. So, you know, we just settled with that. Um, we're adding this cool little flooring here to it, this wooden flooring, and I think it adds to this building a lot. Um, you know, it's, it's a different it's a different kind of setup here, and, you know, we're making it, you know, just feel a little bit more homey, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Wait, that's actually kind of funny I said that, because attacking Toucans, which is like the main inspiration, I'd say, for the series, he did a similar thing here uh, that I'm doing here, where he built uh, an epic theme park, um, kind of like this one, 
and put commentary over it. So that he's a huge inspiration. And he made a similar kind of comment, like, you know, I'm building this, like, you know, for a homey feel. And he made this very corny joke about it. And I am not, I'm not repeating that. That was not intentional. But there's always these, like, similarities, almost, like, popping up between me and his series. And I, I just don't know why. It's, it's always unintentional. But there's just so many similarities just showing up. I, I don't get it. But, um... Yeah, I'd highly recommend checking out this, this, his series um, of building an epic theme park, or, or the ultimate theme park, or whatever whatever that series was, um, because he um, he made he made a pretty good series. I, I like I like his like charisma almost, you know, his just like chill, like laid back method of making videos, and he's a really good planet coaster builder, and he has lots of good ideas and thought process thought processes, and. Um, you know, it's just kind of interesting to see a little bit. Um, but the, the thing about him, though, is he makes all of these corny jokes. And I just do not get that about him. He just makes all of these corny-ass jokes that nobody likes. And, yeah, I, I, I just don't know. It's, it's just so weird. His, uh, his method of telling jokes is pretty strange, in my opinion. But, like, I, I probably can't be talking either. And, and I find him pretty funny at points. I just find the way of him articulating jokes pretty strange. But like here's one. And next episode, we're actually gonna start building our first roller coaster. So you best be excited for that if you know what I'm saying. Yes, yes. So if you thought I was on crack telling my jokes, this guy must be like the like the fucking kingpin of a drug cartel or some shit like that. Like this guy's the absolute embodiment of like those middle-aged white guys, you know, with with six-figure salaries. You know, just trying to act like all hip and appeal to the modern generation. Like, that's what this guy reminds me of. Except this guy is in college. He is a college student. He is young and acting like this. I, I just don't get it. I do not get it, personally. <laughs> but anyways, you know, sometimes we need a little bit of unorthodox type stuff uh, in YouTube. Because, like, everything right now is just so unoriginal and just so, like, repetitive. So, like, I, I appreciate somebody that switches up the narrative a little bit, and, you know, I, I think he fits the bill, bill for that. I think he does that pretty well. So I, I re definitely recommend go, going to check out his series and just, just, once you get past the ridiculously cringeworthy jokes, like, it's, it's a really good series to enjoy. I'm not even gonna lie. Also, he's like one of the best Planet Coaster builders I have ever seen, hands down. Anyway, sorry for not, uh, for not commentating on what I've been doing. But right now, I am just kind of hypothetically building the desks of the workers, and I sincerely apologize on behalf of Thompson Island as to why there are so many guards drinking on duty right now. It is honestly inexcusable. I am not gonna lie. Like, there's just beer bottles spr sprung around everywhere, just like littered all over the place. Oh my god, I love it. I, 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 I do not get these people. But anyways, I, you know, I'm just trying to diversify these desks, honestly. And the beer bottles are some of the only bottles we actually have. Uh, but, but just imagine that they're, that's apple juice in those, in those beer bottles there. It is not actual alcohol. Don't you worry. Eh, who am I kidding? We are not going to pass inspection. Anywho, now we are client kind of cluttering up these people's desks with um, files and folders and stuff. And if you noticed, in the back, I did a lost and found section. So hypothetically, this is where park guests would go to retrieve their items that they may or may not have lost in the park. And um, yeah, I think it does a pretty good job at that. Like, you know, their belongings aren't guaranteed to be here. But they can just stop by, check over, and, and see if see if their stuff got deposited there. And you know, yeah, I, I think I think that's a pretty good system. So now I'm just adding the roof. I think I'm all done with the interior by this point. So um, I had to fix a lot of wall issues with this building too, um, which is kind of unfortunate because one of the glitches I guess in this game is that sometimes if you place the ceiling lower. Um, it'll phase through the wall a little bit, so I, I'm, I'm personally not a fan of the way that looks, but, you know, we just kind of had to work work it out, and I think when it was all said and done, it, look, it ended up looking better than it does now because of that, so I found a fix for it, so, I mean, it, it's all good now. It, it's all good in my book. So, you know, the reason I cut there was because we, we experienced some issues with the windows a little bit, and as you can see, the back wall there is a little bit extended past the second wall. 
uh, second floor wall. So that's pretty much the fix I made, and that took like 10 minutes to do. So I just fast, I just, I, I just skipped that because like there is really no reason for you to see that. Anyways, right now we're making, I, I found these cool, you know, realistic stand, like water stand assets here. And because we can't like co copy and paste an employee back there, we have to use these uh, an animat animatronics. Animat is that how you say it? Animatronics, I think. I think I think it's animatronics. Uh, so we have to put we have to put those back here. I should know that, and I always do know that. It, it's just it's just a hard word to say. To be completely honest with you, like anim animat animatronic, really. So um, anyways, you know, shower thought. Are there any people who get Freudian slips while saying the word Freudian slip? That that would be like the ultimate. Freudian slip, I guess. <laughs> that would that would be perfect. You get a Freudian slip while saying Freudian slip. That's in and of in and of itself just like a really hard word to say. Like, why do people make words so hard? Like, why does the English language suck so much? It sucks. So, like, like for example, if tooth is the singular version of teeth, why isn't like the the plural version of booth beef? It, it doesn't make any sense. Anyways, we're just adding another concession stand here. I think it's okay to have an abundance of those. Um, uh, probably I missed some other integral uh, type facilities here on the street, but I think that's generally okay. Um, you know, but I, we can always just add those later. Uh, it's not the end of the world. Um, uh, as for the name though of this international street type thing, I, I really don't know yet. I, I was thinking of Main Street, but that's like too. Yeah, that's that. That won't work. So, you know, this is one of those times that I'm gonna ask you if you have an idea um, for what we should call this uh, International Street thing, um, because it has to really have a name that really makes a statement for it. It really speaks for it. It really kind of the embodiment of 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 this like pretty epic but old historic street. Um, yeah, anyways, I'm gonna skip through this part because, you know, it's basically me laying down these planters, and I didn't really get the angle right, so it wasn't straight, and, you know, I basically had to straighten those out, and that's not very fun to watch, so, you know, we're just gonna skip to the good part here. So, right now, I'm just going to kind of plan out this plaza. Now, one thing I do know I want here is uh, just a big carousel. This is a day one opening attraction at this park, so, yeah, it's really old. It's been refurbished, kind of but it's really old so um right now I'm, i kind of struggle with this plaza and at the end of this episode it doesn't look good it it, it actually kind of sucks but when it's all said and done i put a layer of concrete over it um you know the prop not the actual floor so it looks like the plaza is all really good and it, it turned out pretty well i'm not even gonna lie um i also decided to make like a kind of wood enclosure around uh around this uh, carousel here, um, because I, I just think it looks better that way. Like, it's not indoors, but it's surrounded by walls. So I, I, I don't know why I did that. I think it just looks a little bit better. So right now I'm just trying to make a good cue that kind of wraps around this carousel here, but it really isn't working in my favor. It really isn't. So when it was all said and done, I just had to settle for this glaring gap right here between the path and the carousel itself, and I'm not that happy with it, but it is what it is. I think it turned out fine. So now we're just kind of filling in the gaps with this plaza. Obviously, we're not going to be leaving those little unsightly gaps, um, you know, where it's just grass in the middle of the path there. That is not final, I can assure you, but um, when we do cover this up with artificial flooring that people can't technically walk on, you know, we just got to make sure... We just gotta make sure it looks, people can walk. Yeah, not really looks, but we just gotta make sure that people can walk in as much places as possible. Um, I think that's pretty important to cover as much surface as possible because it just adds for the realism. Like when, when your air, walking area is too small in a plaza, there's just going to be these gaping holes that nobody actually walks in. Um, and you know, that's a bit of an issue. So I just took a little bit of a break in that carousel. And no, we are not putting an arrow looper there. Thank you very much. No, we are, we are not putting an arrow looper there. But we are putting this very historic wood coaster. And we're not going to be starting on the wood coaster today. Or for the next episode for that matter. 
um, a after doing it. Well, I don't think so, because, like, I don't actually know how much is going to be included in the episode, I just have to cut everything up, um, but I, I, like, technically, like, four or five hours after this point of actual in-game building, I start, um, you know, working on the coaster, actually. So, if I had to, if I had to guess what, this is episode two, so... I think that we're going to be starting to work on this, probably like episode 4, maybe finishing it episode 5. I really don't know yet, you know, we're just taking it one step at a, step at a time. But what I want to do, what I did over the next, this episode and the, the next episode, is I really like kind of wrapped, like completed the station, completed the queue, completed, you know, everything like that. Um, you know, I'm not going to spoil that much regarding, you know, the architecture behind this, but uh, I completed all of that essentially just so we could get started right away on building the coaster, and so we could dedicate a whole episode into doing that. Um, but first, we just had to flush out the plaza a little bit, which is why it took so much time. I was initially hoping to have started the coaster by this episode and finished it, but that is just so unrealistic because... Um, it was only until now uh, that I realized that this coaster will, will be uh, interacting with the tr terrain a lot. So, and, and the buildings and the architecture around it. It's not going to be a terrain coaster, but it is going to be... We got to make sure it doesn't interact with any of the buildings and clip through anything. So, you know, it was just paramount that we laid out the buildings first before working on the coaster. So, you know, like I said, I think it's always better to start the station first and complete that first, so then you can get all of that out of your mind, and it's already done, it's all done, it's all good, and you don't have to worry about that, and all you have to worry about is just completing the coaster, and that's like the best part of this game, so it really, it really makes for some pretty good episodes, where it's just, you know, you're chilling, uh, and we're making coasters, we're making coasters for the whole entire episode, and, and those are my favorite episodes, uh, I, I think. Well, I'm not sure because I haven't, like, voiced over or edited those yet, but I, I have a feeling that those are going to be some of my favorites because, you know, I, I as much as I like doing the architecture in this game, where it shines is the coasters, let's just be real, because it is called Planet Coaster after all. So, I think that it, it should, it, this should be the best part of the game, building coasters, I think it should be the best part, um, and I think there's a major problem if it's not the best part. Um, so, I think that's just kind of my favorite process. I'm not sure if it's going to be more fun to watch me building coasters over building architecture. Because I, I, I do see the appeal with watching people build architecture. You know, just seeing these ideas come to life. Because a lot of Planet Coaster players essentially suck. Like, no offense, but nobody really knows how to build anything. And I'm kind of, I've, I, I was kind of in that same boat back then, back here. So... You know, I, I can definitely see, you know, just regular non-hardcore players just, like, enjoying and valuing a good architect that can really put put an idea into motion and create something. And I'm not sure if I really, I'm not sure if I'm really that description. I don't think if I can really do that. But, you know, I think I get better on as the series goes, in my opinion, with architecture. Um, I was, from, like, the start... The thing I specialized in was the coasters themselves. Like, that's that's what I was pretty good at um, from the beginning. Um, and I think that this coaster ended up turning out pretty well. Um, so, you know, I, I think I'm good in that category. But it's just the architecture that I had lots of room to improve on. And I think I definitely did that. I think I definitely improved a lot. Um, you know, in a few, a few episodes into the series... It was pretty good. I mean, I, I could definitely see my, see my skills increase because if you told me that I'd be doing this like a few months ago, you know, I'd call you a liar because I'm, I'm always just using those pre-made assets and buildings, you know, just kind of half-assing it and just getting the point across and at the end of the day, just focusing on coasters. That's, that's what I did. But this kind of puts the emphasis more on the architecture and the coasters. So that just gives me a good opportunity to really flesh out this park and make it something more of realism, I guess. And I think that's for the better, in my opinion. It definitely expands my horizons as far as my skills in this game goes. Um, because at the end of the day, I think my skills improved. 
uh, significantly. And I'm not even at the end of the series. I'm, I'm in a few. I'm, uh, I recorded a few episodes, and that's it. But I can already see my skills improving because I probably couldn't have done this, you know, a few months ago. So, like, I, I think it's definitely beneficial. Anyways, so you know, I'm working on the queue right now. I, I don't know why I went on that tangent. I, I don't know why I went down that road. But um, you know, I, I connected the express pass, the, the the fast track there. So um, yeah, just completed that. So it's not the best fast track setup because it kind of goes kind of into a queue. Most Cedar Fair fast tracks start at a different entrance and they enter into the station separately, but there's really no option to do that in this game. You have to yeah, start the fast track or the fast pass or the express queue or whatever you want to call it um, at, at a certain point in the official regular queue. And then you have to kind of um, integrate that into, you know, an exit almost and, you know, just wrap it up there. And I think that's a little bit of a pain. I wish that you could have made a separate entrance for the Express Pass or the Fast Track. Um, I, I think that would have been a lot more realistic because essentially no park really does it like this where, you know, you you like make a separate, not, not make a separate entrance. Everybody enters the same way and the Express Pass, you know, starts at a certain point and ends at another point and then you have to wait through that. That's not really how they work. So I think you should... In Planet Coaster 2, they should definitely give people the option to really, you know, experiment with that and try something new. All right, just a quick little side note on this uh, roo these roof pieces I'm using. The reason I'm using these in particular, it doesn't really go along with the building style I'm using, but that's because these are actually scenery pieces. They're not actually building pieces, and that means you really have a lot of flexibility and versatility with where you, where you can place them, because you're, you're not confined to a grid. You can place them almost anywhere. So I really, really like those pieces. Now the, now we're done with the queue, queue, like, kind of building, I guess, and just added a ventilator up there because, you know, keep keep everybody air-conditioned, um, you know what I mean? And um, I, I think it turned out okay, but the main complaint I have with this game is that everything has to be on... It, it's better than, like, Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, where everything was on one universal grid. Now you can choose, like, kind of mini grids based on a building. But it still is quite limiting. I, I don't mean to sound like kind of spoiled when I say that, like, you know, unappreciative that they've made these strides um, from, from this game's predecessor where it used to be very limiting. Um, but, but, like, I'm sorry, it just doesn't really make for a very good gameplay value, I guess. Um, where it's kind of, it's kind of all in, in a very specific grid. And you can't deviate from that grid, grid that much. Um, so I think everything has to be a square building, and if you want to make any curved buildings, then you have to go on a separate grid, which makes your game kind of laggy as you go on, because you're making completely separate grids and se separate buildings and separate assets. Um, and it gets really annoying. And even if you're, if, if, if you're not completely on that exact one-to-one -one scale ratio kind of axis that they want you to be on, that axis where you don't really have any choice of where to place your stuff, it's going to get kind of hard to design your buildings because it, it gets really complicated with the roofs and it gets complicated with, you know, with, um, you know, placing windows like this, for example. It's not on the grid. And as you can see, I kind of had to phase those two windows together because otherwise it just wouldn't work. It, it wouldn't work, it wouldn't look good. So, you know, like, would I prefer to have a full window? Yeah, of course I would, but we kind of just have- we, we, we don't really have a choice in the, in the matter here, because, you know, otherwise the rest of the building won't look good. So, like, a prime example of that would be, like, right here. As you can see, if, if we placed everything in a straight line without anything intersecting, um, you know, I just end up having to scrunch two of those windows together, just just because because it won't work otherwise and that leads to very awkward designs and it, it's not very symmetrical it's not very good looking it, it doesn't it doesn't work that well so you know that's kind of one of my main complaints about this game like as you can see just just another example example there of having to completely deviate your your uh, kind of design choices based on this grid and it gets limiting it, it gets very limiting so um, in, in future games, I'd like to see a system where you can deviate from that grid more, more, you know, freely, I guess. And I'm not sure exactly how you would implement that. Maybe like, 
you know, remove the whole entire grid aspect, but still keep some of the values that keep it like straight and in a building's kind of pattern. Like, like I said, I, I don't really know the logistics and how, how, how they would go about doing that, but you know, that's just a thought. Maybe, maybe a good place to start would be allowing players to add kind of, um, you know, like change the direction of which, of which a building is facing. Uh, yeah, that, that's a good starting point, um, because not being able to change which direction your building is at, you know, like, like it, it's the rotation, it's, lo it's locked. You're not allowed to do anything about that, except for the, except for four, you know, four directions. That's it. You're not allowed to change it by 15 degree intervals, nothing like that. And that allows, that doesn't allow you to make many changes, um, regarding, regarding the building. It doesn't, you know, you're not allowed to make curved buildings as a result. Um, and it's just really wonky. It's re it could be a lot better. Um, and I think once they add, once they add that, it'll, it'll make a lot uh, for a lot, a bit, a better system is what I'm trying to say. You know, th this is a whole entire tangent. I don't really need to go on, but you'll, you'll see me kind of like when this game came out, right? I was like one of those people that bought it pretty much straight away because like, you know, I wasn't that much of an enthusiast back then. Um, but I did like roller coasters and I thought it was a cool concept. You know, you get to build and ride your own coasters. Cool concept. It's, it's a fun idea, right? So back then we were all like salivating over this thing over like, we, we were all like hyped and excited over this. And like, I don't know if that was justified or not because there are a lot of flaws here. I mean, it's like first impressions, like, you know, it's it's new, it's shiny, it's fresh. That's your honeymoon period where like with the game where it's like, you know, everything's there's no problems with it, no issues at all. But as you start to play it for months and years, you kind of see the flaws of the game and then, you know, you make constructive criticism about the game. So you'll see me make a lot of points about like what this game could do better in Planet Coaster 2. Anyways, these are the last things we do in this episode. So that's episode two done. I hope you guys have a good day, and I will see you all in the next one.